Hello and welcome. I'm Emma Turton. I'm a medical intuitive and founder and director of Medical Intuition School. And I wanted to uh, go live today to bring you a little story. We're going to have a little bit of story time. So get comfy, get your cuppa, whatever you're drinking and, you know, get ready for a story. So I'm going to be sharing with you um, a story from my recent life uh, about intuition versus action and how they can feel different and how we can sometimes misinterpret that difference as other things. So say hi when you join me live, say hello, and we can I can say hello to you in the comments. Um, and if you're coming in to watch the replay, give me a hashtag after party. If you're coming in to watch me live in the replay or not live, but you know, after party vibes. Um, so what I want to speak about today is all about intuition versus action. And so often we think that intuition is a certain way and that we um, we assume that intuition is something that is a constant all the way through, that the feeling around intuition is a constant and that if we are following our intuitive guidance, because intuition feels like it is you know, blissful and, and easy and effortless and, and it's a really beautiful feeling to experience an intuitive hit, an intuitive, uh, you know, nudge. Um, and we often get, we often believe that that intuitive nudge can, you know, that it's supposed to, yay, hi, Roseanne, so nice to see you live. Um, it's so, we, it's so easy to think that everything is going to be easy and effortless and that, um, you know, that intuition is going to stay that way. If we're following our guidance, it's going to stay effortless and blissful. And I want to share with you a story from my recent last few weeks um, to illustrate the difference between intuition and action and how they can feel really different and how we can often misinterpret uh, the information that we receive. So a couple of weeks ago, and you may have, if you've been following me, you will may, you may have seen my announcements that my medical intuition practitioner training course is starting soon. And it's just started this week. Um, message me if you still want in, there's still a couple of places, so you can still grab the place. If you would, if it's yours, let me know and we can sort things out. Um, so a couple of weeks ago, I had this scathingly brilliant idea. It, it was intuitive. It landed in me in the middle of the night, totally out of the blue. I went, ah. Oh. I'm making it a 12 month course. It's a 12 month course. It needed to be that right from the start. And I, I, I can see how that works now. And it felt so beautiful. I just felt like an absolute genius. <laughs> it, when intuition lands, it feels blissful. It feels easy. It feels effortless. It feels like it's like coming home. It's the most beautiful experience to have intuition land in you. It feels exciting. It feels all of the good feels, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, there's no fear that comes up when intuition first comes in. It's that instant in that instant, in that first moment, whatever the feelings are there tells you whether it's intuition or fear. And, and fear is all the what ifs, fear is all the overthinking, fear is, is you know, big sentences and big ideas. Intuition is really simple. Intuition lands like that. It's an instant. It's something that just drops in and you, it's often a single word or two words. It's very, very simple and it feels really easy when it drops in, it feels really blissful and, and really comfortable when it lands. Uh, sometimes the moment after that, all of the fears and overthinking can come in, but it's that initial moment. That's how you know it's your intuition speaking. And so I knew in that moment, I was like, ah, oh, it's a 12 month course. Okay. I'm going to change it. And I announced it before I really thought things through and let my fear come up. <laughs> I'm human. My fear comes up no matter how much work I do with it. My fear is just there to keep me safe. Your fear is there to keep you safe. It's not there to be fought and squashed down. It's there to be, sure, shoved over to the passenger seat so it's not driving the car. But it's still there to go with you on the journey. Um, and so, you know, I, before that could come in, I announced it. I went, right, that's it. It's happening. I hadn't thought about the how. <laughs> And so I, I went through in this blissful days of I'm such a freaking genius. This is just the best. I don't know why I didn't think of this before. I know exactly how the holidays are going to work out. I know exactly how this is going to work with future courses and I know how it's all going to fit in. It all landed in one beautiful blissful package in me and I knew exactly what was going to happen um, in terms of those details. And so I was like cruising for a couple of weeks, announcing it, talking about it. Yep. So happy celebrating it. But when I came to taking the action of actually physically changing the course from what it was previously, which was an eight month course 
to being a 12 month course, everything came crashing down to a screeching halt. My computer stopped working, the internet stopped working, uh, my, my memory drives, my hard drives stopped working, I couldn't access Zoom, I, co I couldn't access so many different things. Everything kind of came to a screeching halt and I'm between virtual assistants at the moment so I had nobody else to help me to do anything. <laughs> So <laughs> I had to do it all myself and I'm, and I'm proud of the fact that I know how to wrangle things on a computer, but it is not my zone of genius and hats off to the people whose zone of genius it is because you people are saints. <laughs> so <laughs> you're worth your weight in gold. If that is your zone of genius, I absolutely, you know, I bow down to you. Um, it is not my zone of genius. I can do it. I have learned painfully slowly how to do things in my um, my secure learning portal, how to do things in my membership portal, how to do all of the technical back end stuff. I know how to shift things on my website, create new web pages, but it takes me forever because I'm a medical intuitive. That's my zone of genius. <laughs> Teaching medical intuition. That's my zone of genius. It's not doing that other stuff, the computer stuff, much as, you know, it's satisfying and I celebrate that I can achieve something. It's like banging my head against the computer to get it done. And that's what it was like. And so I, I had to laugh because it had gone from this beautiful, blissful, cruisy, yep, I'm freaking awesome. I'm such a genius. I've created this shift and it's all intuitively guided. It's so beautiful. It's so easy. It's so effortless. It's all just landing to, oh my God. I can't do all this stuff. There's so many things to do and I've just got to try and wrestle with everything. Everything feels suddenly really hard and heavy in the action. And so many times, perhaps many years ago, before I really understood how intuition worked, I would have taken that as a sign that I was on the wrong track. Let me know in the comments if this is resonating with you. If you have something similar that you've experienced, share it with us. But in the past, I would have taken this as a sign that I was on the wrong track, that I was barking up the wrong tree, going on a wild goose chase, and I shouldn't have followed that initial thought. And it wasn't actually intuition that I'd followed. And I would have doubted everything and I would have put the brakes on and I would have stopped in my tracks and gone, nope, that was the wrong path because it's not still easy. Um, I, I thought that because it felt easy at the beginning, it should continue to feel really easy. Uh, when I'm following my intuitive guidance, otherwise I must have got off path. And that's not true. So uh, Roseanne says, um, intuition is usually associated with goosebumps for me. Yeah, beautiful. Yep. Yeah, I call them spirit bumps. Absolutely. And that can often be the case. It can be, you know, something that lands in you in a physical sense that you have that that physical experience of, of goosebumps to confirm that it's your intuition. And I love that the body can confirm that for you. That's so beautiful. For some people it lands that way. Everyone receives their intuition in a different way, which is why I love teaching it in medical intuition practitioner training, because you get to learn how to be a medical intuitive the way you receive your intuition, not the way some book says you're supposed to see it or, or experience it, not how I see it and experience it, how you do. We work that out and then we hone your skills because you've already got the superpower. It's just about identifying it and honing it. Yeah. And so I had this experience, this confirmation of, you know, what I may have done perhaps wrong in the past in that I would have stopped going down a path I was intuitively guided towards. I would have shut the door and gone, nope, that's obviously a sign I shouldn't be doing that. And would think these things, these difficulties or obstacles in my path would be a sign that I shouldn't go down that way. It's our fear that looks for those signs. Our fear is asking for signs all the time. So that's our mind. Our mind and our subconscious mind are looking for fear, for, for signs to, to reinforce the fears that are coming up. And so if we're looking for those signs when we're in the action phase, having followed that blissful intuitive hit and gone into the action phase that suddenly got sticky and messy and hard, then that's not a sign that we need to stop doing the thing. That's not a sign. Sure, it's a sign to get a VA and get some support <laughs> and to, to get people who know what they're doing with the system. So I have that support next time I come up with a harebrained idea to do something and, and then action it. Um, but it's not a sign to stop following the intuitive guidance that you started following in the first place. So that sticky, unpleasant, messy feeling that can happen um, 
that's not a sign about your intuition at all. In fact, it has nothing to do with your intuition and everything to do with your willingness to take action steps. And so what had happened was in the previous two weeks, I was busy doing other aspects of, of um, you know, interviewing people, coming into the course, doing other things in other courses. I'm always doing a lot of things at once. I juggle a lot of balls in my business and, and I love that. I love that there's so much variety. But I was putting off the action of, actually working out the schedule, actually working out the calendar, actually making all of the physical changes within the portal because I was hoping to get someone who could do it for me. But of course, it was going to need to be me because I'm the one who needs to make sure it's right moving forwards. And so I was just kind of hoping it would go away by putting my head in the sand. I wasn't taking action apart from announcing it, which was, yeah, that's an action step in terms of visibility. But I, I didn't take any actual physical action steps to make it real, to make it so. I was kind of hoping it would just magically do its own thing. And that's not how intuition works either. We get to, we have to show up to meet the universe halfway and then the universe will show up to support us. Um, and it was only once I actually started to really wrestle with the schedule, wrestle with the timing of the you know various breaks and things throughout the course because there's beautiful study breaks and lots of spaciousness in the course now which i love like it's so totally the right thing to do but it wasn't until i did that that after i put in all of the breaks that we were going to have that i really wanted that i wanted it to be this way and then i put in the content and realized that it's spaced out better than any other year that i've done it before that it's evenly spaced throughout the year and it actually went all the way to the final week that was available to have content was the final bit of content that needed to come out and it was like, oh my god it's actually designed right from the outset from three years ago to be a 12-month course i just never ran it that way and it was just much more intensive in in a shorter time period without as much integration and embodiment time um and so it, it fitted perfectly. It was like, thank you, universe. That's a really funny joke that you just played there. And I just went, oh, <laughs> the schedule's done. <laughs> so I could have done that two weeks ago and I would have felt so much better about it. It wouldn't have felt like I was walking through cold, sticky honey over the last week trying to get things sorted for, um, for the beginning of the course. It's so funny how we do this to ourselves. So even me, even with all the experience I have of living an intuitive life and working with my intuition, all the time, I needed to have this reminder that that you know, one that that the action feels different to the intuition. That doesn't make it wrong. Doesn't make your intuition wrong. It just is different to your intuitive hit. And and two, that you need to take that action sooner rather than later. Because the sooner you take action, the less it feels like it's messy and hard and sticky and difficult. And the more you're able to bring in support for the things that aren't your zone of genius, because you have time to do so. I didn't have time to do so. I had to figure it all out myself. And I did, and it's wonderful, and it started on time, and it's perfect, and everything is good. But it would have been more comfortable for me had I taken that action earlier. Uh, and I wouldn't, uh, yes, I was riding on the wave of, oh, it's so easy and blissful, and I love an intuitive hit, love following my guidance, I'm celebrating it so good. But that action it's meant to feel different to the intuition and it's totally okay sometimes yeah it will be easy sometimes you'll take a step someone will show up and you'll think you're the perfect person for me and that has kind of happened somebody has landed a va in my lap and i'm, I'm having meetings with her as well this week so you know that has kind of happened that it's actually happened that way i've actually got somebody who's stepped up to go hey this person's recommended perfect you already know all the stuff great okay let's have a chat um, and that's really easy. I didn't even need to go looking or advertising. So it's how effortless is that? Thank you again, universe. <laughs> feel so supported in this. But it just, I had to laugh and I had to share that with you. That, 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 and I, and I know me from 10 years ago, me from before really working and understanding my intuition would have seen that difficulty or those obstacles as a sign I was on the wrong track. That I'd taken the intuitive hit, but I'd gone down a wrong path. And that's not the case. That is absolutely not the case. So if you have received intuitive guidance to do something and it's felt blissful and you've been afraid to take those action steps, whatever they may be, I encourage you to take the action step. I invite you to take that action step today, no matter how small it is, 
telling someone about it is an action step, but actually doing something to make it real is a much bigger action step. So one small thing, one small step in the right direction, in the direction of the intuitive hit you've received, will open up doors for you and ease the pathway. Because when you show up halfway, the universe shows up the other half of the way to meet you and makes your life easy from that point. When I showed up and started doing the thing, the universe went, yep, your course fits beautifully into 12 months. And hey, look, here's a VA. <laughs> so it's such a beautiful way to really um, notice that, that you know, this stuff works, it's real. And it is so easy to live that intuitive life if we are willing to keep coming back to the principles and the foundations of living an intuitive life. Um, so if, and Olivia says, thank you for, hi, Olivia, welcome to the, to the story time. <laughs> Feels like I've, I've got Big Bear and what's his name? Big Ted and Little Ted. And then we're sitting on a chair having story time. Um, thank you for sharing this. It has landed at the perfect time for me. Perfect, divinely timed as always. I love that, absolutely love that. And so if you have been receiving intuitive guidance and saying, okay, give me a sign, you already got the sign, that was the intuitive guidance. I invite you to take your action steps, no matter how uncomfortable they may be. I love story time, me too. <laughs> I'm going to do story time more often. <laughs> so no matter how uncomfortable they may be, to take those action steps because that's where the discomfort can begin to fall away. The discomfort only continues to grow and grow and grow the longer we put off following our intuitive guidance. And it gets like, the, the honey gets thicker and stickier. Oh, hi, Laura. Yay. Good to catch you live in California. Your message here is confirmation of the messages I was hearing leaving work today. A reason I'm up at 2.30 a.m. here in Northern California. Oh, thank you for sharing your, your prime time. My goodness, 2.30 a.m. That's when we deeply connect in with our intuitive guidance. So well done. That's, yeah, well done for following that guidance to be here live and to get what you needed from this story time, story time with Emma. <laughs> oh, it's so nice to see you live, Laura. I don't get to see you live that often. This is so nice, such a treat. And um, so that's, that's, this is your confirmation for if you're watching this video now live or if you're watching it as a replay later, um, Roseanne says, thanks Emma. I also needed to hear this today as well. I knew there was a reason I needed to come in and have story time. Thank you, Roseanne. I'm so glad that it's landed at the right time for you too. Um, so, if you are watching this, this is your sign that you need to go back to the original sign. You already got, you don't need another sign. When we wait for signs, that's our fear waiting for signs to have confirmation of what our fear believes, not our intuition guiding us. If we have already received an intuitive hit, an intuitive nudge, guidance in any direction, and it felt blissful, it felt easy, it felt effortless at that moment that it landed, no matter how soon after that all the doubts came in, that initial moment of, ah, oh, yes, that initial full body yes that you can feel with an intuitive hit right before your brain picks it apart and says it's all wrong, which is the fear coming in. If you already received that, then you already have that sign. The more you ask for signs, the more you are waiting for a sign that will tell you your fear that it was right. And that doesn't help you because you still haven't followed your initial guidance. And it's only when you start to follow that guidance that you start getting more and more and more guidance and more confirmation. Like I have, I finally, you know, took the plunge and started to work out the schedule and then literally laughed out loud when I went, oh my God, it all fits into the year perfectly. And, and my son who was homeschooling nearby, I went, what are you talking about, mama? Who are you talking to? <laughs> just talking to myself because I actually did the wrangling of the schedule and was like, oh my God, it fits into 12 months. Like, like it was always meant to, it was like, it fit like a glove. Like how, how did it, how did that happen? An eight month program fit into a 12 month time period, like a glove better than it did before. Like so much better. It was like such a, such a confirmation that I, of course, following that guidance, I had that confirmation. Of course, it was the right thing to do and I should have done it before, but you know, there's no shoulds. I'm totally okay with the fact I had a learning curve and that I needed to see it in action to be able to come to that conclusion myself. And then of course, I got the confirmation by getting a message from a friend who connected me with another, with, with a VA, a new VA. So I was like, oh my goodness. So now I've seen the need <laughs> firsthand because I've realized just how painful I find doing all of that 
back-end computer stuff uh, and how nice it would be to be able to hand it over to somebody I can I can trust who can do all of the things in all of the software packages that I use for my online business. Um, it was so lovely to have that confirmation as well. I didn't even need to go seeking and advertising. And so that was more intuitive guidance. It's another nudge in the right direction that it's like, yep, you, you're on the right path. This is the this is just showing up to make life easy and effortless for you because you finally stepped into the thick, cold honey and started taking some steps. When you finally do the action, then everything starts to fall into place. It can take wrestling. It can feel deeply uncomfortable. And that is not a sign you've gone down the wrong path. That is a sign you're taking action. And if you're uncomfortable, you're probably growing and that is probably the right path. If your intuition guided you that way, it's definitely the right path every single time. Laura says, I received my guidance months ago and was excited and blissful. Brilliant. Now I move forward. Oh, sometimes it takes us months. Don't be too hard on yourself. Sometimes it takes us months, myself included. Sometimes we just don't want to hear it, right? I had guidance months and months and months and months, probably over a year, maybe a year and a half ago to, to do the reset protocol, my, my reset protocol to go and do it for myself. Do you think I did it? No. It took me actually saying to a whole group of people, I'm going to do it live. Who's, who's with me? And then for people to sign up and for me to feel obligated to do it, to actually do it. And I'm loving it now. I don't know why I never thought of doing it live before. It's so cool. Um, so, and it's, the energy in the group is fantastic. Everyone's sharing their recipes. We're all enjoying getting so much more out of it. And it's so much easier in a group than it was on my own. I've only ever done it on my own before. Um, and with clients, of course, clients have done it with me as well. But everyone's got the opportunity to go through it in the group experience now. And so that's really beautiful. I didn't listen to my own guidance, you know, a year and a half ago because I put my head in the sand and didn't want to hear it. It was easier to not hear it. I wanted to just put it off and it was inconvenient. I didn't want to have to do it. It'll be fine. Everything will be fine. And then eventually I got to a breaking point in my body and went, you know what? It's not fine. We're doing it. <laughs> I'm finally going to go through with this and I've received the information. I need to do it live so that I do it. And I did. And now it's perfect. So Laura says, so the universe can keep handing me guidance that I act on. Yes. So lovely. You've been able to upgrade your course. Thank you. Much love, Emma. Time to go back to bed. Beautiful. Yes. Now you can rest because you know exactly why you were woken up at this time and why you are here. Thank you for joining us in the middle of the night. I think that's so like that's serious commitment. I appreciate your commitment, Laura. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and so, you know, that that's the thing when we finally do follow our intuitive guidance, like I have with the reset protocol. Um, let me just share if you're interested in that, you can still join the reset protocol. It's not in the other link that I've shared there. Um, because I haven't had time to put it on my website yet. Uh, but you can check out all the details over here. And I'll just put it here. Um, if you want to, you can find that out there. You can see what's in there um, and you can join us. Come on in. There's people that are actually starting it now, so you're not too late. And I'm feeling amazing. My body feels like a whole new body. So it is really cool. So seeing as I'm mentioning it, I thought I'll drop it there. But it's just so good because when I finally did take that guidance and act on it, after having gone through uh, 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 things getting heavier, 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 harder, harder, it all seemed too much. And then I acted on it, announced it, people started jumping on board and I ended up with a fantastic group of, I think it's about 26 of us now. And, you know, we're doing this thing together and it's just been so easy and effortless to do it as a live thing. I've never done it. I never even considered doing it as a live thing before. Um, and it just has been really easy because I finally followed my intuitive guidance. <laughs> so if you, but you have to act on it. You can't just receive the guidance and then keep asking the Oracle cards for another sign. Keep asking for some more information. You have to take action. Uh, and so I invite you, if you have received your intuitive guidance to take the action step, whatever it is you've been guided to do, no matter how big or small, Oh, excuse me, to take the action step that you are being guided to take. Um, because you may be surprised that once you finally start walking through the thick, cold honey, it starts to become warm, runny honey very quickly. And everything starts to become more effortless as it all, all the difficulty and discomfort starts to melt away. Um, but it's not a sign that you have done the wrong thing or gone down the wrong path. 
keep that in mind when we ask for those signs it's our fear asking for signs that it is right it's not our intuition it's not us asking our intuition to show us and guide us it's us uh, our fear asking for a sign that it is right it's not right it's rarely right our intuition is always bang on a fear tries to keep us safe but we can listen to our fear and take advice from it we don't have to let it make our decisions that's what our intuition is for that's how we live an intuitive life. So I invite you to step into your intuitive life, whatever you've been holding back from, to do it now, to take that action now. And whatever discomfort you're experiencing right now will start to feel easier and easier and easier and more intuitive guidance will show up in the form of people to help you and things that will make life easier for you and everything magically folding around you because you're finally taking your own intuitive guidance and acting on it. Action's so important. We can't just sit around and be intuitive and never take action. Otherwise, there's just no point. <laughs> There's no point receiving guidance if you don't take action on that guidance. There's no point sitting and being, you know, spiritually devout and having all this spiritual stuff land in you if, if you don't actually live that from that place. If you don't walk the talk, what's the point? So it's time to walk the talk. It's time to take an action step, no matter how uncomfortable or how out of your depth it may feel. You will feel as you step off into the abyss, you will feel the land, the ground come up to meet you and hold you as you walk because you were intuitively guided. And that is never wrong. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Thank you so much for joining me live. For those who've joined me live, it's been such a pleasure to have story time with you. And I uh, thank you for watching the replay. If you've watched the replay this far, let us know in the comments what you know if this resonates with you what are your experiences what have you what are your action steps you're going to take next what are you going to take next what is your action step what will you do based on your intuitive guidance what is the next step that you will do to help step through the discomfort and start taking action because once you do that everything will start to get easier so let us know in the comments what your action step is I am going to go and finish cooking dinner. <laughs> it's a reset protocol friendly dinner. <laughs> so I'm quite excited. It's very excited. Lots of herbs and spices. It's really, really tasty. It's going to be really, really yummy. So um, thanks, Roseanne. I love your beautiful purple heart. Thank you for joining me again. It's been such a pleasure to have you here. And I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day or night in California, wherever you are in the world. Enjoy your day and night. Bye now.